So I'm always trying to find new ways to learn a language and I actually think that YouTube is hands down the best resource for that. And then I had this sort of revelation while I was thinking about how I actually became fluent in English and while I was thinking I just suddenly realized Monty Python. So when I was in high school I was pretty good at English still but I couldn't communicate and I couldn't explain topics to people in a fluent manner and then one of my English teacher actually introduced me to British comedy because he knew I liked comedy in the first place so he showed me some Monty Python skits with English subtitles and while at the time I couldn't of course be able to understand a hundred percent of what they were saying but it was getting the kind of humor they were using and that motivated me to just keep watching more videos and trying to understand even more and fast forward to today I can say that I can understand pretty much 99% of a Monty Python comedy skit without subtitles of course but at this point you might want to say but how is YouTube better of a resource than let's say Netflix or podcasts or even a textbook and here's how so the first advantage of course is that with the YouTube video you have access to the video of course the audio and the ones with subtitles give you access to the text as well while with the podcast you often rely solely on audio and of course there are podcasts that have transcriptions but I guess it's a little harder to get a hold on them rather than just clicking subtitles on a YouTube video but in the first case lack of video is extremely challenging for a beginner and intermediate learners to understand what is actually going on in the conversation. Now think about it for a second. What is easier to do in a foreign language conversation? Speaking face to face with a person or having a phone call? When learning a foreign language, actually, we often underestimate the importance of visual cues for our understanding. That's right, we tend to forget that things like body language are a great help in our ability to grasp meaning. The fact that video and images greatly improve not only our ability to understand, but also our ability to remember information is backed up by numerous professors. Stephen Krashen points out that we use more than just our linguistic competence to understand messages. In fact, we also use things like knowledge of the world, context, and extra linguistic information. Furthermore, video and images in general help us remember information better, thus making language learning more efficient. This is also called the picture superiority effect. Professor Alan Pavio formulated a theory called dual coding. The dual coding theory says that our brains can record information visually, verbally, or both. It turns out that concepts acquired with pictures are recorded both visually and verbally and are easier to recall. And this concept of information retention through words and pictures is also called the multimedia principle. So at the end of the day, the more cues that we have at our fingertips, the easier it is to engage with native content. But what about Netflix? After all, we can find video, audio, and text in there too, right? Yes, but there are definitely some advantages on using YouTube more than Netflix. First of all, YouTube is free, so that's cool. And the second advantage is the variety of content that you can find on YouTube. Now on Netflix, you can generally find three types of content. You got movies, TV series, and documentaries. On YouTube, not only you can find those kinds of content available, but you can also have stuff like vlogs, I don't know, travel videos, cat videos. I mean, who doesn't watch cat videos? You have cooking, you've got presentation, public speeches, you name it. And the last advantage is tied to the previous one. It's because of the variety of content that you find on YouTube. It's definitely easier to find content that is catered towards your level. So it means that on YouTube, it's easier to find beginner 
level material, intermediate level material, while usually Netflix movies or documentaries or things like TV series are a little bit more in the advanced level. Now think about it. Is it easier to watch a TV series or a morning routine video? Now lastly, YouTube greatly outperforms textbooks, especially in the vocabulary territory. The quantity of vocabulary you can learn on YouTube is outstanding compared to a language textbook or even vocabulary books for that matter. In fact, with just a handful of YouTube videos, you already come in contact with thousands of words. And then another great advantage of learning with a YouTube video is that you have the ability to see grammar and vocabulary in context. And this is just a thing that textbooks suck at because they just give you random sentences and that's it. But context is crucial in our understanding as human beings. And we should keep this in consideration whenever we sit down and learn language. And apart from all of this, there are even more reasons why YouTube is a great language learning resource. One of these is that YouTube is extremely good at making sure that you never get bored with things to study, because you can always find something new. Our brains love novelty, and the YouTube algorithm is great at recommending new things to watch. Furthermore, you have the possibility to learn with topics you're interested in. In fact, the more interested you are in what you're doing, the more focused you become, and the more motivated you are to understand. And this is what motivated me in the first place with English, because when I was watching Monty Python skits, I had tons of fun, let me tell you. And that gave me almost a laser focus. And doing that, I was basically just absorbing words. Talking about focus, the average YouTube video length is perfect for any 25 minute Pomodoro session so that you can maximize both your attention and effort. But how do you do all of this in practice? I mean, how do you find good YouTube videos that are catered towards your interest and are at your current language level? In the next video, I'll show you how I actually go about finding a video like that and how I study it. So stay tuned.